as I said, phasor is a nice way to solve a circuit problem uh, that has a sine or cosine for a source there. So if my source is, for example, here we go, my source is a DC source, I mean AC source, has some value VM cosine WT. Well, if it's WT, that means you can write that VM cosine WT plus, there is no phase shift, so it's really zero phase shift. So in phasor, we take the source and we write that VM angle zero. No, that's zero, ang angle zero, not zero to zero. If your source, for example, is this one, let's say you have a current source like in the previous example, and it was cosine WT, we found beta to be 30 degrees. Then in phasor, we write that I sub M angle 30 degrees. So we just put the phase shift, the angle. What happens if your source is a sine instead of a cosine? Can you change a sine to a cosine? What is it? Which is how much the phase shift? Oh. It's 90 degrees. I forgot to get an eraser. So instead of being 0, it would be VM 90 degrees? Is it a plus 90 or a minus 90? Now think about it. Cosine WT, and the question, is it plus 90 degrees or minus 90 degrees? Well, let's think about it. What's sine of 90 degrees? One. If you make that a plus, right? If you make that a plus, what's cosine 90 degrees? If WT is 90, if you make it a 90, WT is 90 degrees. Let's say this value is 90 here. What is sine 90 degrees? 1. Well, if this is 90 and you put a plus, what's 90 plus 90? 180. What's cosine 180? Yeah, negative one. So it's not the same, right? But if you make it a minus now, it makes it what's 90 minus 90? Zero. 0. What's cosine 0? One the same as this, so it's minus 90 degrees. So when you have a sine function, you can write that as VM angle negative 90 degrees. Yep. Do you assume there's a WT attached to that? No. WT stays the same. Remember when you have a sign, the frequency doesn't change, it's going to be a phase shift. We're looking at that's the phase shift. So I don't even bring WT into the problem because it's going to be in the answer. So I avoid that, putting it complete. That's like, don't, why waste my time when it's going to be there? So if I have a source here of VM sine. WT plus 40. I go, well, I can change the sine to cosine by subtracting 90 degrees, right? So this would be VM cosine WT plus 40 minus 90, which is what? Negative 50. So I can write that as VM angle negative 50. So when I solve my problem, then when I change it back from phasor to time domain, I'm gonna still going to leave the WT there. So I work it backward. So if my answer, when I solve it, I'm just jumping here. If When I solve the problem, let's say I finish the whole problem. My answer, I started with the source, this source, and my problem. Uh, 7 cosine 377T plus 15 degrees. Let's assume that's the case. So when I write that source, I will write that source at 7, angle 15. 
And remember what my procedure is. I said, what this method is, we're going to take a problem that was in time domain, change it to phaser. I just changed that source from time to phaser. I'm going to solve it in phaser. And let's say when I solved it in phaser, my answer was the current I is 4 angle 30. Right? Now I need to change it back to time domain. So what is my answer is going to be in time domain? If my answer is 4 angle 30, then I know when I change it back to time domain, it's going to be 4 cosine the 377t plus the 30 degrees. Would there be any reason why, besides putting the final answer in cosine, you want it in sine? No? Cosine sine is the same thing, just a shift. But because phaser goes from cosine to phaser directly, I always put in cosine. But if the angle like is minus 150, you can change it to a sine if you want to. Or subtract 90 degrees and put in sine. But that's changing it from time to phaser. This is back from phaser to time domain. Now, I didn't show you how to change. We just showed you how to change the source. But how do you change the capacitor? How do you change the inductor? How do you change the resistor? Convert them from time to phaser. So let's look at that. Here's the good news. So what we just did was just change the... Uh, from time to phaser. Just a source. Time yep, just a source so far. Now, what about the resistor? What about the capacitor? What about the inductor? When you change them to phaser, the resistor stays the same. I'll jump to the inductor. The inductor value becomes J omega L. And the capacitor, 1 over J omega C. Now, if you have a J in the bottom of fraction, you can rationalize that. How do you rationalize it? You multiply the top and the bottom by J, which makes a negative J in the bottom, or J squared, which is a minus 1. So you end up with negative J over omega C. So mathematically, that's the same as this. And again, it came from this math. You say, I need to rationalize this. I'll multiply the top and the bottom by J. What's 1 times J? J. What's J times J? J squared WC. What's J squared equal to? Negative, Negative 1. Oh, that's J here. What's J divided by minus 1? negative j over omega c. So a lot of times you see me write negative j over omega c instead of 1 over j omega c. It's the same thing. So let's take the problem we just did and see if we can solve it in phaser. Everything we learned before, remember Ohm's law V equals I times R? That's still true here. In phaser, V equals, we use capital letters, I times R. Ohm's law doesn't change. Remember, some of the voltage in a closed loop is zero mesh and nodal analysis? They don't change either. Everything stays the same. So let's take that problem we just did a few minutes ago and do it again. Let's put some numbers in it. Instead of VM and all this, let's say we have pick a value for the source. What do you want? 5 cosine what? So let me pick a number. 10T, is that what you said? Seven. Or 7? Plus 7. There we go. Here's a phase shift to 7 degrees. We have a resistor of 50 ohm. I'm just making things up. 
and we have an inductor 3 Henry. First thing first, what is W here? Ten. Ten. Very good. That's this number. Remember that solving in phaser, the first step is what? Convert from time. Let me go with that. Convert from time domain to phaser. Let's see. That source becomes five angle what? Seven degrees. The resistor does not change. And the inductor has a value of J omega L. Use boxes instead of drawing even pictures. J omega L. J 30, right? Let me use a box for the resistor even. I like boxes better than resistors. That's what my circuit is. I converted the source to phaser, the resistor to phaser, the inductor to phaser. And now we treat these, even the inductor, just a complex value, just like if it was a resistor. If I'm looking for the current here, these two we call them impedance in zone. That's an impedance. These two impedances are connected how? So if there were resistors in series, what would you do? All right, then we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to treat them just like if they were resistors, but they just have a funny number. Five angle seven. The value here becomes 50 plus J30. Now let's solve it in phaser. How would you solve for the current here in phaser? If this was a voltage source and that's a resistor, what method would you use? Ohm's law. V equals I times R, or in this case, I times Z. Impedance, we use Z for impedance. They're not really resistors, it's an impedance, complex value. The voltage is five angle zero, I mean seven. The current I'm looking for, and the impedance for the circuit is what? 50 plus J30. Can we find I? Five angle seven over fifty plus J thirty. Where's my calculator? Five angle seven divided my calculator. You can mix and match modes. Thank goodness. Fifty comma. 30. I don't know if I have to put J or not. I think I'm okay. And my calculator gave me an answer of point zero eight six angle negative 23.9 degrees. Almost 24. I go 24 degrees. 23.96. What's the third step? Put it back to time. Change it back to time. Okay. See how quick now convert to phaser is not that difficult. Solve in phaser just like if it was simple resistors. Dun dum bum bum. And now the next step is step number three. Convert from phaser to time. 
We know the current in phasor is 0 0.086 angle negative 24 degrees. That becomes 0 0.86. We had a cosine in the problem. W was 10T, stays the same. But now I have a phase shift of negative 24 degrees. And we use lowercase because that's in time domain, that's in phasor. So that's how we approach these problems. Instead of solving them in time domain, it's a lot quicker and easier to solve them in phasor. Now let's take a bigger problem here. If you had a current source instead of a voltage source, same you thing. The same, same thing. Yep. Let me see if I can find a decent problem. I'm looking for one with numbers in it instead of. I'll go to the back of the book. I'll get a decent problem. 